Well, how y'all are this afternoon? This is your buddy George Jones over here at the Bergen. No, no, we're at Knob Creek. You can tell by the background noise. This <laughs> is Knob Creek. Uh, we're on the test firing range, is what this little area is called, is the test firing range. There's actually a range going straight down through there, and there's a berm over there about uh, 50 yards. And typically this is the area where when a gun comes in before it goes out on the shelf as a used gun, it'll get test fired. Uh, so this is an impromptu session of, hey, I got this old used gun because Bergen Gun Range is closed because our, our zone has deer gun season for the next 14 days. So we don't operate the Bergen gun range during, as a range, during deer gun season because half the people are over our hunting it instead of shooting it, okay? That's, that's basically why we're up here. So I went to Kenny and I said, hey, can I use the test fire range and you make a little video? So here we go. This is the Zaspia, Zastiva, Zastiva. <laughs> You call it whatever you want, buddy. Uh, AK, AKM version. Now this one is Zastiva, Serbia, and it says, uh, read owner's manual before use, of course. Made in Serbia. C-A-I, Georgia, V-T. Whatever Georgia VT is. I didn't know they had a VT in Georgia, but apparently they do. It says so here on the gun. Standard AK-47 in every way. Good solid semi-automatic gun. Uh, it's very nice. Now the common argument about this gun is whether or not this is, this gun is as we're gonna get bombed. Whether or not this gun is as good as an arsenal, or an arsenal is a better gun than this gun. You know, and it's like, you know, AK purists argue these things all the time. Uh, I've shot this gun a couple of times just to try it out, and it shoots pretty good. Now, we don't have a target up on this range at all, so I'm just going to do a little firing demonstration, and we're going to look at it. Sling swivels are here instead of on the side. It doesn't have a trap in the butt. It has the standard Soviet block. Uh, rail side mount on it. The bolt is in the white, and this is a fairly new gun that still retains the little plastic piece on there, which is on there to keep the bolt handle from ripping through the carton during shipping. That's why that's there. The current owner has installed a three-prong flash suppressor, which I find pretty cool. The wood is very nice. Uh, I'm not going to shoot at anything precision, but we're going to move the sight back here to the 330 battle notch if I can get over the hiccups. Uh, for Pete's sakes. Oh, uh, yeah. Blooper. Just keep right on going. <laughs> A Pro Mag 30 round waffle. Let me try that. Going up between your legs just like that because we don't even have a shooting bench. Put on some ear mufflers and give it a try. Give it a try and see how it works. Uh oh, let's try right down there. Just shoot it something. You guys out there that got Motties? This trigger is much better. It has no kick forward when you release it. It's very smooth. The stages are very smooth. The release is very smooth. The recovery is very smooth. You get the heat. Hold, hold this gun a minute. Give me that 
gun back. A little shot of Coca-Cola helped get me over the hiccups. So I can continue. Alright, let's shoot it once or twice and see how it shoots again. It's just a pleasant AK to shoot. Some of them are so rough. You know, the Mahdi, it had like a reset trigger on it that forced your trigger back forward. And if you got off the trigger too fast, it snapped forward and about 10 shots, your finger would be numb. It's just a ridiculous gun. This is pretty cool. Let's go for the firm. Be silly. <laughs> we got some in there. Finally, he's out. <laughs> well. Great gun, Zastiva. It's a really nice AK. Just a beautiful little AK. Well, anyway, I thought we'd take this opportunity since we had the gun and had a place to shoot it to bring it out and show it to you. That's a little, kind of a short video, but there it is. Like, take, share, fire, commentate, and subscribe. Leave me a dollar in the Patreon box if you want to, and if you don't, well, I keep right on making content for you. Love your neighbor. Be a good citizen. God bless America, and we'll see you when we see you. So here we are back again. Let's talk about this gun a little bit. We shot it a few minutes ago. Actually, we shot it several hours ago when it was daylight. And now we're down here in the Apache Armaments Maintenance Area. So let's talk about basic maintenance on an AK a little bit. So there's this thing on YouTube when I post a video, it has to be assembly and disassembly for maintenance purposes only. So that's where we're at here. Now, this particular gun has a slight idiosyncrasy when you go to field strip it. And that is that it has a keeper button over here on the side to prevent you from accidentally knocking this loose and knocking it all loose, which is like, I've never seen one come apart on its own, you know, but there it is. There's the button. So here's what we have to do. I push down on the button there and then push in on this guy in the normal fashion. And you lift that off fire. And then again, in order to get the op spring out of it, you have to push the button and push this guy forward. And it all locks together. You pull that guy out. Of there. Now, this part needs very little to no maintenance. A little surface oil on it so that it works its way around the spring. But basically this doesn't have enough metal to metal contact on the operating guide to really require it. And this part doesn't move in the gun at all. So it's like it doesn't need much lubricant. It doesn't need much maintenance. The next step on this assembly is simply to pull the op rod, pull the bolt op rod and carrier assembly back and it comes right out now let's talk about this piece for a minute it's pretty easy to get your bolts apart just pull it apart like that <clears throat> lubrication point is here and in here also uh, your raceways are on the receiver so your lugs that match your raceway Needs some kind of lubrication on it. On an M1, I use grease. On a carbine, I use grease. On an AK, I probably use grease, just to tell you the truth. Uh, gas piston is a point of maintenance, and that's this part. This is where the fire from the barrel comes in contact with the operating system, right there. So you can get the guy cleaned off, and your edge needs to be sharp, okay? So don't be filing on it or scraping on the edges or anything like that. They can damage the edge, which is like your gas piston ring right here. Okay. Otherwise, standard maintenance, 
Green Orlon pad works pretty good. Check your piece here and make sure the gas piston is not separating from the bolt carrier. Like that. Now, internally, what I do is I change the oil in them. Uh, I take the pistol grip off of it, which is simply unscrewing this screw. And then down in here, there's a little T-shaped piece of metal that holds it in there. You take the pistol grip off of it. If you care for your stock and it's nice like this one, you want to keep it that way. But if it's an old oil hardwood stock, you know, that looks like hell, you don't have to worry about it so much. What I do is I spray it full of, well, I use, and you've seen me use it, uh, half and half Ballistol. Get down in there with a toothbrush and clean around. You can release the hammer by retaining it with your thumb and pulling the trigger, and it comes forward all the way over and hits that bar. You get down in there with the end of an armorer's toothbrush on the narrow end, brush everything out. What I do is I turn it upside down and take brake parts cleaner and spray it up in there and wash all that out of there. Now, remember, when you're using this solvent brake parts cleaner, you have to remember when it dries, you've got to lubricate everything back because it strips the lubrication off of it down to a manic, manic, manic. Boy, it takes it all off fire. Okay? Barrel cleaned in the normal way. Another section that you need to consider maintenance on is this the gas return tube or your upper gas assembly so the way you get that out of there is you take this pin right here is half cut so it retains it in there when it's the lever is fully down so you push up on that guy you push up on that guy you hand me that pair of pliers right there beside that right there on the edge of the bench on the edge of the bench, on my side, on my side, on the edge of the bench, right there. That, yes, that pair of pliers there. Being careful with what you're doing, not to scar the thing up. Get a hold of it with a pair of pliers and pull it up there to the takedown notch. Then this should come out. This should come out. Huh, this should come out. Bring it on up there, and that comes off there. Because what happens is that pin cams and grabs the top of this. Okay? Once you've got it off of your rear trunnion, then of course you can clean in here because there is some dirt and black in there. This guy, I use a 20 gauge shotgun rod, to clean a shotgun brush to clean this out, and then I run a 20 gauge barrel mop through it. And that's what cleans it out. And you need to clean all of these parts out, especially if you're using corrosive ammunition. The ammunition, the powder's not corrosive. It's the priming that's corrosive. Now, a maintenance point I want to talk about. If you like to shoot an AK and you like to shoot it a lot, okay, this is something you can do to protect your hand guards on both sides. And reach up here. There's a little lever right there. Reach up there and turn that lever around, and this guy will come forward, and that'll let you. That guy will come forward. Got a soft hammer. Got a soft hammer. Soft uh, jeweler's hammer. Plastic on one side, rubber on the other. And you can take this off of there. Now this one's on fairly tight. So we're going to try and get it off to demonstrate for you, if we can find the tool. Well, that'll do. Just give me that in there. There you go. Here's, here's my pecker. And that comes right off there. See, it cams right onto that little cut. You come up there and take your guard off of it, which ooh, ooh, I messed up. Just take the cleaning rod out of it. Take the cleaning rod out. Now, your hand guard will come off. My suggestion is, there's a little bit of air space between the barrel and the hand guard. 
What I do on AKs, and I haven't done it on this one yet because it's not mine. Here's your bearing surface for the handguard right there. What I do is I take a piece of aluminum can, cut it out to where you can't see it, and slip it down in there, and then put the forearm back on the, on the gun. But what that does is it creates a heat shield to help protect the wood from the heat of the barrel when you're like me and you go absolutely crazy burning them up. Okay, and then you can do the same thing on the top. Okay, you just make you a piece and work it in there. And that's pretty simple. Barrel, in the same way you'd normally clean any gun. You know, good brush with a lot of solvent. And don't forget your chamber. Okay, on an AK it's real easy to get to. On an AR it's a booger, but on an AK it's easy to get to. You got this great big open area in there. When you go to the gun show, you buy those, uh, oh, they're pipe cleaning rods for prepping copper pipe to be soldered with fittings. A little brush is about that long, and then it got a handle on about that long. It's made out of twisted wire. Buy those. Soak that guy real good in solvent. Work it around in there. Clean all that out there good. <clears throat> Do the same thing with your rod and a, and a, and a 308 caliber brush through there several times and then get to work on it with a solvent cloth, and then find a solvent cloth patch, and then finally clean patches until you come out clean. All right, there's a little maintenance. Let's see if we can get this thing back together without completely embarrassing ourselves, or at least me. Get this guy back together just like it came. Go back in there. There we go, good and tight. Bring this guy up, and it may require a little it may require a little convincing. Let's see if we can convince it a little bit with a rubber hammer. Soft hammer. If you like them, get you some kind of a soft hammer to work on them with. Don't be a beating on them with Papaw's claw hammer. All right, now come up here. Put your little lip right here, and that has to go over it. Okay, put that guy back in there just like that. Bring her down here. Find your sweet spot. Stick her back together. <laughs> yeah, like every project you ever done. There you go, just like that. Come down here. Cam your catch back in place. <laughs> I get mother's little helper. Now be careful. Get a hold of it and don't let it slip. That way you don't put a scratch on it. Bring it down to the detent point right there and you're good again. Now, put, let's put the bolt together. The bolt goes in here and here's your bolt. So you've got a cam right here cut out. It'll only go in there one way. If it's in there just like that, like it don't look like it's going to go. Okay? And then cam's right up there. This is the pickup point on the bolt that grabs the round and pulls it out of the magazine and gets it to go in battery. It's always down. Okay. And this is the way you start. Okay. So you bring her back here like that. You bring her over here. You put your accelerator rod in. Get it down into the, sl get the uh, slips down into the way. You let your keep your bolt in the correct alignment when you're doing this. Bring it back in here like this. Run her in there. And your lugs will drop into the raceway and you go forward. And you're good there. Now, get your spring back in. Remember the catch on this model has a safety catch that helps hold the gun together. So you bring that forward, get it started, push your pin, and it comes into battery. Just like that. Before you think about it, forget about it and walk off without it, put your put the cleaning rod back in it, which goes to the forearm, and it simply bows down and the head of it snaps into that little groove. Like that. And that keeps it from coming out. And finally, <laughs> let's see if we can get the top cover on it first try. 
Okay, you have a groove in your upper trunnion right there that corresponds to the shape of your top cover, and your top cover has a guide, which fits right in there. So you start looking for it, fit it in there, has to go all the way in it, all the way in it, has to be straight, push your button, and I've almost got it together first try. <laughs> Boop, there it goes. Now your top cover's on. This wouldn't actuate if this wasn't in the right position. Safety check. Safe function check. Make sure everything's all right. How do you do a standard function check? You do a standard function check on the AK the same way you do it on the AR-15 or the M1 rifle. Pull the bolt fully to the rear and release it to go forward. Take the gun off safe. Snap your action. Fine. Retain your trigger. Pull the bolt fully to the rear, let it go. You should hear a click. Doop. And then pull the trigger. That gun works correctly. All right then, that's about the size of it. Uh, little maintenance review on the AK type rifle. Y'all have fun now, be safe, and we'll see you when we see you.